This whole journey started when I went looking for a new project. I was looking for something I could really dig my teeth into, you know, push the boundaries, and then Victor called. He started throwing down some concepts, and I got a bunch of ideas. This could be the most ambitious project yet. It's true, Victor is always pushing the boundaries, so let the adventure begin. Here he is, Mr. Sports Car. Man, this thing drives so good. I mean, really good. I was impressed. Victor pulls in, and he's looking really comfortable behind the wheel of that new car. Now I get it. Enjoy it while it lasts, man. Now I'm like a little skeptic. I'm going, oh, shoot. Do I really want to tear apart this, like, awesome looking sports car that drives and handles convertible top? It's like, come on, Victor, what are you thinking about? I see the look in his eyes, and I just want to confirm. It's like, hey, man, do you still want this to happen? <laughs> Once we go forward, there's no turning back. My whole life, I always wanted to get a Porsche. It's your last chance, otherwise we're gonna get into it. I don't really want to cut this thing up, but hey, I got Ian in my corner, and he's always pulled off my crazy ideas. We got a good foundation, so let's move forward and do what we gotta do. The Porsche and the donor car. The only thing I really want on this thing is this top. You know what, we may use some of the silhouette, but this top, the way it opens, gotta go on the Porsche. Because Victor's been so vague in his description, I'm just trying to figure out something to get Victor's idea in motion. He's got these two cars, he doesn't want either of them, so I'm assuming it leaves a lot open to my interpretation, so I'm gonna go forward in the best manner I see fit. I think the most straightforward thing to do is for me to just cut this thing, to multiple pieces, get the chassis out of the way, and then tomorrow we'll tackle that one. Here we go again. We're on the next journey. Where we're gonna end up, nobody knows. We don't even know. Ian looks at me thinking I know what the heck I'm doing, but in my mind, I don't know where in the heck I'm going. Victor's heading on out the door, and I tell him, enjoy that Porsche while it's still intact, because I got plans. That's my baby, right? Just, you could cut the heck out of anything you want. Just don't cut my top. OK. Right. Surgical precision. How do I look in this thing? You look good, man. All right, I'm out of Dodge. Have fun. So I guess the first thing is to lift this roof up and get rid of it in one piece. One thing I can say is I'm a master of disassembly. We're gonna work right through this car, pretty simple. I said, it's not locked. The one thing that was the sure thing, you know, the main wish on the list, doesn't work, no good. Nothing, it's not even budging. But it is, the hydraulic pistons, they're hydraulic. So as you try to lift it, there's no way to lift it. They're sealed shut. That's a super sketchy aspect of the design. You could see what happened. This car failed and somebody got locked inside. And that's why that window's kicked out, guaranteed. The way this roof opens is it's a hydraulic unit, so you cannot just lift it up. There's oil inside it and it's non-compressible. So if the motor doesn't lift it, you don't lift it. So what they did was they filled it with oil. It worked for 10 minutes. And they sold it to Victor. <laughs> Perfect case scenario, you know, starting off on a fresh new foot here, and of course nothing works. Marion lies the design floor in the Sterling kit car. We just figured it out. I'm just gonna cut these four bolts and start over. The thing I was hoping to do is just retain these hydraulic hinges. You can see all the fluid is just coming out of the top of the pistons. I'm just gonna cut it out. A sane, normal mechanic would probably take off the tire and look under the car, but I ain't got time for that. We're gonna cut our way through. This is 
ugly body's out of the way, there's the pot of gold at the end of the kit car. It's a Volkswagen chassis, perfect running vehicle. I'm taking it home. The funny thing about putting this on the floor is all of a sudden it's just a concept car. It looked kind of weird up in the air with the Volkswagen suspension under it, but it actually looks more like some kind of a race car once it's laid down on the ground. Kit car is gone. Victor's bringing that Porsche back. It's a whole different process. Back early. Wow, dude, you cut that thing apart. I don't know, something doesn't feel right here. Can I put this top back on there again? Just yeah, to see yeah, just if I, we window. haven't lost anything? Victor's kind of got a one-track mind. I don't know if anyone's ever loved the Sterling roof as much as him. So, like, you know, you okay. can do anything now. Now it feels right because you could kind of see my flavors back. Right. The number one thing I found out is that hydraulic unit is bunk. What happened was uh, they filled it with oil. You were able to lift it five times uh -huh. and then it failed. So that either needs to be rebuilt or replaced entirely. I'm not concerned about the hydraulic. I was concerned that he's gonna cut my roof. You never know with Ian. So this thing's apart. I'm ready to get into the old Porsche, man. I got a couple ideas on that. So I'll just take it all apart. By the time you come back tomorrow, this thing will be bare bones, ready for construction. But remember, one wrong cut of a wire, it won't turn on, it won't go. This thing has sensors everywhere. I know, that's what I was reading about online. I did my research. I know how to take it apart without messing up with the computer. I'm on board. Let's do what you got to do. Might be a little painful to see it break apart. Like really painful. You know how many people are going to be pissed off at you, not me, people. He did it. I just watched. This is the part where some people flinch, but just like the surgeon in the operating room, you know, sometimes you just don't want to see it, but you want to get fixed. All right, man. I'll start All right, taking talk it apart. to you later. I'll just. Don't be nervous. I got this. You know, I have complete faith in Ian, I guess. Well, first things first is to disconnect the battery and unbolt everything I can. This is the uh, white glove tech disassembly. What Victor doesn't know is this is a lot like a Volkswagen. It's just a little more high tech. The whole idea is to retain the complete drivetrain down to every last wire that the computer has a sensor for. All of this stuff is critical if this is going to pass emissions and if it's going to run properly. If you ever tried to take a door off, say, a 55 Oldsmobile, <laughs> it's a totally different game. I'm not planning on using any of these body panels, but I'm also not going to beat them up. They're really nice. If we do have to retain something, we could just grab them and reuse it. Look how much stuff is hanging out beneath the fenders. Looks like freaking Robotron or something. You can see how much room there is in the front of this car, which is perfect for the low nose profile we want to get in the end result. The OG is in the house. It's not my house, but we're still doing our same old thing. He's inspecting, he's checking stuff out, and I'm busy working as usual. What do you think? Like next level. I mean, we haven't done anything like this before. I don't think this dog is much into imports. You know, he likes the old school hot rods customs. This is kind of a first. It's new territory. I'm guessing he's going to warm up to it. I knew that everything from the doors forward was going to unbolt. It came apart no problem. The back is a different story. I don't know what we're getting into. No turning back now. I'm waiting my whole life to do this. That's exactly what I was hoping to see. So now I can cut this bubble away, and we got tons of room for a tire. He wants flavor, I got it right here tires this big. 
After I cut the outer fender skin off, I saw the inner wheel tub and I realized we can cut a straight line front to back and it'll allow us much more clearance for a bigger rim and tire combo. There's nothing like the smell of freshly cut Porsche in the morning. Look at that. One last thing that's in the way, and I know we're not gonna need it, is the windshield. The thing about this Boxster is that the windshield frame is a roll bar, and it's got a bunch of electrical wiring going to the rear view mirror. Sometimes things don't come easy, you know? I started off with my surgical precision and got all caveman on it in the end. I love the choice Victor made with this Boxster. As a concept car, it's ideal. The fact that it's a convertible, all the structure's still there. That's a huge plus for a kit car scenario. You cut the roof off a regular hardtop car, it gets flexible. It's a perfect base. It's a nice car. Glad to have destroyed it. No turning back now. This thing's looking like a blank slate. I'm really happy with the way it broke down. What the heck did you do to my Porsche? Victor comes in reacting in his typical way when he sees something that's pretty shocking. He's trying to hold it together. You know, I think he's, uh, he's a little concerned. I came in and, man, it's like worser looking than I thought it would be. I mean. In taking this thing apart, it's really showed me how much room we have to be creative. There's no mechanical stuff ahead of the axle in the front or behind the axle in the rear. So it's pretty much open to whatever you want to do design-wise. As Victor's walking around, I'm just giving him a rundown of all the positive things I'm seeing in this vehicle underneath. How all the structure's still intact, how we didn't need that windshield that's broken all over the place in the corner. And he's responding. He's, he's kind of getting it. Ian started explaining, then I started getting excited. Hey, this is the first step. You see all the wires, nothing's been cut. So everything we need to either bypass or reinstall, it's just a plug and play system. This thing has so many sensors on it. I told Ian, all I care about is that that car run after it's all stripped. Apparently, he's found out that if you tamper with the electronics, these cars go into a safety mode and they won't start. Yeah. Everything is the same. Awesome, man. That's so, awesome. Like butter. That's why I took it apart this way. Hook the battery up, it runs. I think it's going to be a good go kart, man. Vickers become pretty attached to this car, and just seeing that it ran, you know, he wanted to hop in once more. No rear view mirror. Nothing. Nothing in your way. He wanted to sit in the car that's all cut apart. What's more fun than that? Still feels good. Same car, uh, man. Look at the wind's hitting my hair. <laughs> I can't do a burnout, but I could. Uh huh? That's pretty cool. I seen it. I feel it. I taste it. Now. I'm excited, where's the body at? Well, we got that other thing and I'm not sure. We gotta fit it on and see if we got even something to start yeah. with. Now that we're this far, we gotta put that roof on, make it work. I mean, just to realize some form of an idea to hack two cars apart is a pretty, big investment on your part. I hope something here is gonna work. I gotta cross my fingers. One, two, I need more luck. Three, four, <laughs> five, six. Okay, let's go for it, man. The thing that I was mainly concerned with from the start is how wide that dashboard is. That actually fits. Wow. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> it is literally the exact same width pillar to pillar. The dashboard totally fits in there. That's ridiculous. That's my roof. My cockamamie idea literally worked. I'm that guy that just thinks these crazy things up and hope they work. I mean, I'm even crossing my fingers now, and that thing worked. I 
think he rolled the dice and came up pretty good. Just seeing that this roof fits, I mean, that kind of makes me fearless at this point. I was very apprehensive, but I could see how your brain's working, you know? We could do anything. I mean, hey, now it's simple. We just got to design the whole car. <laughs> the crazy thing is a lot of people might wonder what the heck we're so excited about, but you know, for me, it's the initial two days of, of mock-up, and that's what this proved is that the concept is solid. You know, the whole car did have to get taken apart just so we could see this. When my children are born, it's like they're the most beautiful baby there is, and you're like, oh, and everyone's looking at it like, whoa, what's that guy looking at? <laughs> the car only a mother could love. We got a little of that, a little of this, and a lot more of nothing. All we gotta do is build a car now. Out here in Pasadena, the Art Center College of Design, their annual car show. This year's theme is called Hand Built, so it's featuring a lot of hand-built, one-off and prototype cars. My homework assignment from Victor was try to find some flavor. You know, he's using that term constantly, so I'm not looking for any specifics here. Just trying to see what's on the ground and what's in the classroom. The coolest thing about this show is that it's all invited guests, alumni, designers, cream of the crop. So all of the cars here have some design elements to pull from, whether it's super antique or super futuristic. A few years ago, I was invited to this show with the Space Junkie in its first incarnation. So it was really an honor to be invited. You can see the stuff here is world class. We got a lot of really expensive exotic cars here. I was looking at this McLaren mostly because it has a side vent profile that mimics what Victor and I were discussing. There's also a lot of stuff that I can't even pronounce. Carbon fiber, one-off prototype supercar stuff. This McLaren has a door that opens by a wave of your hand. I don't know how it works. A heat sensor? It's like the magic touch, look at that. Yes. Super cool. Some of the things I was really paying attention to were the side vents, the exhaust placement, all the different features on these supercars. This would be a pretty interesting design for Victor's windshield, where the center comes through like that. I love these little fins coming off too. You don't see that. Same thing, all these cars, they have that divot in here and then flat. Some of them you see the engine, some of them you don't. All of these artistic things you're seeing are also for function. Tons of air vents, streamlined, just everything about them is about making the car fast and efficient. There's one bluish black car, all hand laid carbon fiber. The exhaust is incredible, the interior is unreal. It looks like a video game rendering, but in three dimensions. It's like looking at any artist's work. They go through this phase or that phase. You see the work progress. And you look at the early cars, you see how it's evolved into what's going down the road today. So you can see how they're kind of dated. You know, the more modern ones are way more radical than these. Same thing with this one. That's the crazy thing. When you see the super modern stuff, if you didn't know the history, you wouldn't be able to identify them just by the look. But after studying it for a bit, they're pretty easy to pick out you know what brand's what when you're looking at certain aspects of the vehicle. Walking through the center of the show, this is where they have all of the hand-built, one-off vehicles. A lot of aluminum bodies, just really incredible design and fabrication skill. I think this is freaking great, man. We're looking at this aluminum body that was made in the 50s or 60s, very simple craftsmanship and tooling, and the result is like world-class finish. This guy knows his work for sure. This car's in bare metal, no filler, you can't see any seams, and there doesn't appear to be any waves in the panel work. It's really about trying to find something unique. I'm looking for the oddball. There's this 1936 Scarab. It's like a minivan from the past. Incredible. 
thing I love about the 30s cars is the Art Deco stuff. This is totally inspired by some kind of an insect. You see the beetle on the front, the way this all opens up. I don't even care how this applies to the car we're doing, but come on, flathead V8 in the back. I want this. I'll trade this guy six cars for this car. Walking through the classrooms here, you can see they are heavy on theory. Sketching, illustration, the whole deal, it's all about ideas. The Art Center is all about the new young talent, and uh, I'm kind of scamming in a little on that. Checking out the classrooms, looking around, see what all the hot young designers are up to. It's really about trying to find something unique. I want something that's completely unidentifiable and like hypnotizing. I'm really charged up. I got a million ideas. I took a bunch of pictures I want to share with Victor. I think we're ready to get started on this build.